There are a number of uh, numbers to get to, but uh, let's begin with the latest news on inflation. Uh, new numbers came out this week. Um, what did they show? Yeah, they show that um, uh, inflation is continuing its gradual decline from its peak last June based on the consumer price index. It peaked at 9.1%. And the numbers this morning, um, uh, I would say, kind of uh, were more on the good side that, than the bad side. The, the overall CPI month over month fell by 0.1. Um, the, um, the core CPI month over month, however, uh, did rise by four tenths of a percentage point, which is a little bit on, on the high side. Of course, the core CPI excludes the more volatile uh, energy and, and food price components of, of the index. The overall CPI, looked, I think, as I recall, is around 4%. The, the core CPI was uh, 53 um, continuing a gradual decline. Uh, I think one thing to say about the report is inflation, again, continuing a gradual decline, but it remains uh, much more elevated than most forecasters thought it would be at this stage, uh, at this point in time, than they thought, let's say, a year or even six months ago. It's still well above the Fed's uh, 2% target. Um, they would like uh, the, the, the inflation rate to kind of settle around 2, 2.1, not based on the CPI, but based on the uh, price consumer expenditure, um, the personal uh, consumer expenditure price index, which is a different metric. It tends to come in a little bit lower than the CPI, uh, at least has over the last several years. And so, um, yeah, that's that's a, one, one thing to mention about the CPI report, um, which I think is noteworthy, is that housing uh, rents in particular, which tend to come in with a lag and, and the way the CPI is constructed, that 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 component is kind of tell, telling you what's been happening with how uh, price of housing services and rents from um, several months ago, as opposed to today, that's been putting upward pressure on the CPI uh, over the last few months. And so that that is probably a good good factor to consider because that, that, that uh, as, as that component um, catches up, if you will, uh, that might take some pressure off the CPI going forward. So that, that could be a helpful thing going forward. Is it, uh, is it a concern that core CPI just seems very sticky? I mean, that's just not oh, coming down I, I as think, much? Or... I think absolutely. And I, I don't think it's just the core CPI. I think it's the, the overall CPI as well. I think, as I mentioned, um, you know, the inflation rate is coming down. Uh, it's coming down gradually. It's coming down much more slowly than uh, forecasters generally thought six, 12 months ago. I think it's coming down more slowly, um, you know, perhaps than the Fed would like. Um, that said, um, um, you know, I think when this gets broadcast, people will know the news from the Fed meeting uh, tomorrow. Um, but I think all expectations are the Fed will, depending on how you want to phrase it, pause or skip um their their rate increase in this for this meeting and as and then can then reevaluate um economic data and and decide what to do going forward they've had the fastest rise in interest rates since the early 1980s um and i think they've they've been so aggressive at raising rates i think they uh, they are thinking now is the time perhaps to take a slower approach evaluate um uh, the trends in the economy, the labor market, which you haven't talked about yet, but you know, remains very, very tight. The economy is, is um, I think, in, in the face of a lot of forecasts, is surprisingly resilient. Um, so that's that's a factor that weighs uh, on, on their mind. Uh, the economy is probably growing faster and the labor market is tighter than, than uh, our central bankers perhaps would want. Um, but but by the same token, uh, because they've raised rates so quickly and raising rates in terms of how it affects the economy, it is like uh, steering an oil tanker. It takes effect with a very significant lag, 6, 12, 18 months. Um, they have to, you know, perhaps it's prudent to take a, a wait and see approach for a little while, which could mean one meeting, could mean two meetings. It could mean skipping uh, rate increases uh, going forward. Yeah, they, they are still committed, I believe. Uh, we'll find out in their statement tomorrow when they, um, that accompanies, um, you know, at, at two o'clock, they'll make a statement about any changes uh, or, or, or not in their, their interest rate uh, policy. Um, that, that will shed some light on what they're thinking is going forward. 
Um, but, you know, I think taking a wait and see, there's still a lot of concern about uh, liquidity, bank failures. We had three significant bank failures. There's still um, uh, that that could um, the, the, the decline in liquidity could well be uh, not so much a good thing, but it, it will put downward pressure on the economy. And from that perspective, um, it's something the Fed needs to consider carefully and take into account. That does pose a risk um, uh, to the economy going forward.